Good afternoon. In chapter two of our Alien Triple Play, we are rapidly coming up on the seventh anniversary of the discovery of Oumuamua. On October 19th, 2017, the first confirmed interstellar object to pass through our solar system was found by a telescope in Hawaii. And after some debate as to what it should be called, originally they were going to call it Rama after a mysterious alien spaceship in an Arthur C. Clarke story, it was instead called Amuamua, which is Hawaiian for a messenger from afar arriving first. But perhaps it should have been called Rama because after all this time, an artificial alien origin still remains the only rational explanation for what Amuamua was. But how can we say this with such certainty? Well, we're going to find out right now. This, unfortunately, is the best imagery that we ever captured of Oumuamua as it made its journey through the solar system. Also, sadly, by the time we noticed it, it had already made its closest approach to the Earth. So, whatever happened to this object prior to us catching sight of it is a bit of a mystery, although, based on its trajectory and its velocity, we can come to a number of conclusions. First of all, as as you can see from the footage, it appears to be winking, getting brighter and dimmer depending on where you are in the footage, and that's because Oumuamua was highly reflective and rotating, and also a disc. So every time it appears to be edge on to us, it's a lot dimmer than when we can see the entire disc. So all of the cylindrical illustrations that you've seen of Oumuamua, these are a little less than accurate. Although, virtually every time we see a Muamua depicted in the popular media, it continues to appear like this cylindrical object or cigar-shaped object. This is what it more probably resembles, a disc shaped object approximately 100 meters in radius or 200 meters across that is and about 35 meters thick that is to say if it's an asteroid and i'm going to explain why it needs to be those kinds of dimensions if it is indeed an asteroid but here's the things that are so bizarre about this object and i'm going to go really quickly over the things that we already know so we can concentrate on what almost certainly makes it an artificial object. First of all, it originated in a location of the galaxy that's consistent with a stationary object when compared to the local standard of rest or LSE. That means that a Muamua was moving at exactly the same speed as the galaxy is rotating and less than 2% of the objects that we have seen throughout the galaxy are actually moving at that kind of velocity, and this would make a Muamua incredibly useful as a navigational aid, assuming that it was an artificial object. Now that, of course, is not enough information to confirm its artificial origin, of course, but we also need to talk about how it just happened to pass through the solar system very close to our planet could have gone anywhere, but instead it made a close approach to the sun and a surprisingly close approach to our planet, close enough to where it could have gotten a good look at the Earth. Once again, just happening to pass through the Goldilocks zone of our star and just happening to pass relatively close to the Earth, closer in fact than it passed to any other planet in the solar system. Again, this could be purely coincidental. However, as I mentioned, before, it's also strangely shaped. That bizarre disk shape is not very consistent with the asteroids that we've detected within the solar system. It's highly unusual, also highly reflective, more like metal than it is like rock. But once again, even though all of this is rather odd, it doesn't scream techno signature. So why do we come to these strange conclusions about a Muamua? Well, it's because of how this odd object behaved on 
its way out of the solar system. Instead of traveling the way it should, under the effect of gravity, the way every other object we have ever observed in the past, it began to accelerate out of the solar system without any visible means of propulsion. Now, sometimes comets can do this with cometary outgassing, but cometary outgassing creates a cometary tail, or at least some debris or some sort of evidence that outgassing is taking place, and we had this object under observation for weeks and saw no evidence of any outgassing whatsoever. No debris, no strange gases accelerating out of the object, nothing to indicate what might have caused this mysterious acceleration. Now, by the way, the acceleration was minor in the extreme, only five micrometers per second squared. That kind of acceleration is barely perceptible. I mean, surely our readings just must be an error or something like that, right? This can't be anything that significant with acceleration that minuscule. Well, no, that's actually not the case. We also have to consider just how massive a Muamua is if it were an asteroid. Keep in mind, you're talking something that's 200 meters in diameter and about 35 meters thick. Let's say it was made up of porous rock, which is approximately 1,500 kilograms per cubic meter. We are assuming that this is one of the lighter types of asteroids out there. Now let's crunch some numbers. Pi r squared on a disk that's 100 meters in radius and then 35 meters thick on top of that. You crunch all of those numbers and you come up with an object that weighs 1,650,000 metric tons. Anything that would accelerate an object this heavy to any sort of perceptible level, anything that we could possibly detect would have to be significant. We're talking a substantial amount of the object's mass would have had to have escaped through outgassing in order to produce this type of effect. How do we know this? Well, NASA is actually betting the lives of every man, woman, and child on this planet it on how thoroughly they understand the effects of gravity on objects in space. I am, of course, talking about Apophis. Apophis is going to pass uncomfortably close to our planet, as I've mentioned in a number of videos, only about 30,000 kilometers or so from the Earth, which is inside the orbit of many of our geosynchronous satellites. If Apophis deviates even a fraction of the amount that Muamua deviated from its course, it will slam straight into the Earth. Muamua deviated over a hundred thousand kilometers from its projected course by the time it passed the orbit of Jupiter. Apophis is going to travel through far more space than Muamua did during that time frame, and yet NASA is so completely certain of their calculations when it comes to the gravity of the sun and the motion of objects in space that they are totally confident that this object is not going to collide with us. Now, in my opinion, I think that NASA is being a bit too comfortable about this, a little overly optimistic and perhaps a bit arrogant to completely rule out the possibility of an Apophis impact in 2029 when so many things could theoretically happen to this asteroid between now and then, but that gives us an idea of just how thoroughly we understand the impact of gravity on objects orbiting the sun or just gravity on objects in space. There is no way that a natural object should have accelerated even a tiny bit unless it had some sort of substantial outgassing. We're talking a lot of outgassing in order to produce this type of deviation in trajectory on an object this heavy. So what's an alternate explanation? Well, one of the obvious possibilities is that Oumuamua perhaps was not as heavy as we thought. Perhaps it's not 
35 meters thick. We actually have no way of telling exactly how thick a muamua really was. So what would happen if it was a lot thinner and the only thing impacting its motion was the impact of solar radiation on its outer skin? Solar radiation and photons, even though they produce a barely noticeable effect on the motion of an object in space, they do change it slightly. And if the object is very, very light, then they have a much greater impact on its deviation. And if a muamua were a couple of millimeters thick and a hundred meters in radius, then that would actually explain its deviation. And there's nothing in nature that fits this description only things that are manufactured by intelligent civilizations. For example, maybe a light sail, or perhaps something as simple as a fragment of technology, a piece of a Dyson sphere, for example, or just an ancient piece of space debris. But there's something else a bit odd about a muamua that suggests that it might not just be a piece of debris, and that is its rate of rotation. In spite of the fact that it began to accelerate on the way out of the solar system, its rate of rotation remained constant. It didn't change, not even slightly. Muamua continued to tumble very predictably with a rotation period of eight hours. So, what else might it have been? What have been some of the more outlandish natural theories that have emerged? Well, if a muamua was much, much lighter than an asteroid, perhaps it was a cloud of hydrogen or perhaps a very, very thin disk made up of nitrogen. And if it was that, then any sort of outgassing from a pure nitrogen disk would be invisible to our telescopes because they aren't designed to detect pure hydrogen or pure nitrogen outgassing. Well, there are significant problems with these ideas, although they were put forward and for a while the media clung to these explanations, saying that, sorry UFO fans, Muamua has been explained and Avi Loeb is a nut job, blah blah blah, until eventually it became very clear that these explanations were far more unlikely, as a matter of fact impossible compared to the artificial explanations. Remember when I said that a muamua had to be at least 35 meters thick? Well, that's because it passed very close to the sun. If it were made out of pure hydrogen or pure nitrogen, it would have been absolutely destroyed by the intense heat that it would have been subjected to during this close approach. We're talking 600 degrees Kelvin at its closest approach, that's 326.85 degrees Celsius, more than triple the boiling point of water. Any thin disk comprised of such brittle materials with such low boiling point temperatures would have been utterly annihilated by the sun before our telescopes would even notice such a thing. And that further restricts the possible natural explanations of a muamua. Whatever it was, if it were natural, would have to be resilient enough to survive that close approach and yet light enough to somehow be accelerated away away from the sun by the force of solar radiation alone, or by some invisible force that we have never observed before. There is one other possibility, and this was the most recent natural explanation put forward, that Oumuamua had pure hydrogen hiding deep inside the asteroid. It was heated up during its close approach, and over time, in other words, by the time it passed Earth's orbit, all that hydrogen finally finally burst out of the asteroid and provided that acceleration. Now keep in mind, we're talking about the lightest gas in the universe, the lightest element of any kind in the universe, providing observable acceleration to an object that weighs over 1.6 million tons. Because again, we're going back to the idea that a muamua was just some sort of natural asteroid with hydrogen hiding inside of it. In order for that to have happened, it would have required that a substantial percentage of the asteroid be compressed of hydrogen and for all of that to suddenly start gassing out at once without creating any sort of observable debris trail. That also 
is impossible. We should have been able to observe at least some debris being blown away from the surface of Oumuamua while all of this hydrogen was suddenly outgassing. UFO skeptic's favorite historical character ever was the friar William of Ockham, who said that if you have two competing ideas to explain the same phenomenon, you should prefer the simpler one. But at this point, the simpler explanation is the artificial one. We have seen many objects in the solar system that behaved like a muamua because they were lightweight, comprised of extraordinary thin metals because that's the kind of metal you need to build a rocket that can overcome Earth's gravity or simply travel through the solar system. You don't need a tough, resilient metal to build a rocket. All you need are very, very thin types of alloys similar to the type of material that we suspect Muamua may have been built out of. And so far, we've seen nothing in nature that could possibly explain Muamua and its odd behavior. But we have seen thin, perhaps hollow, disc-like craft not only manufactured by our own civilization, but in our skies all over the Earth. And we've also seen them in interstellar space. And it's for this reason that I believe that Oumuamua is the first confirmed example of alien technology that we have ever observed with our telescopes. Alien technology that simply cannot be explained in any other way. Oxum's razor does indeed apply here, but the simplest explanation is that somebody built an object that could do the sorts of things that we saw Muamua do, and that we've also seen numerous other objects do across not only our own planet, but around others as well. Thank you very much for watching. Also, I would like to thank Jen and Ed for providing me with some amazing UFO footage from all over the world and also some stuff from deep in space as well. I have his channel linked in the description and also he has a Patreon channel with more exclusive UFO stuff. Pretty cool. And also, speaking of Patreon, I would like to thank Carlton Little for supporting me on PayPal, trying to get me out across the Atlantic to Cape Canaveral to cover this amazing amazing launch that hopefully will be coming up sometime in late September. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and as always, stay angry about space.